Hello everyone! Today we're diving into a very important and interesting topic in our electrical system, the neutral. I'm sure most of you are aware that our residential homes operate on a single-phase system, consisting of three key cables connected to our electrical devices. First, there's the hot wire or live cable. Then there's the neutral cable, the focus of our discussion today. The third cable, known as the earth cable, is also of great importance, but we'll reserve it for a future video discussion. The live cable is responsible for delivering power to our devices, and the neutral cable serves as the return path for the electrical circuit, completing the loop, and allowing the current to flow back to its source. In this case, our source is the transformer. However, have you ever wondered why we don't simply name both cables as live cable, such as L1 and L2, since they are carrying the same current in series, or why not, just call the neutral cable as return cable? Well, the reason lies in the transformer, where the neutral cable is connected to the neutral point of the transformer. Subsequently, the neutral point is linked with the safety ground. This safety ground often involves a substantial copper rod securely grounded in the earth. With this connection, the neutral point and safety ground share the same potential, creating an equipotential reference, commonly referred to as zero volt. This ground reference point is very important, particularly from a safety perspective and enabling the design of a stable electrical system. In an ideal scenario, the neutral cable connected to this neutral point would have zero volt as well. This ensures no potential difference exists between the neutral cable and ground. However, in practical applications, the neutral cable still conducts current and possesses some resistance. Consequently, when measured using a voltage tester, a minor voltage drop can be observed. If a person accidentally touches the neutral cable, this results in the neutral to ground voltage, or known as touch voltage, drop across that person. In a well-designed circuit, this voltage should be kept low within the safe limit to minimize the potential harm due to electrical shock. However, it is still advisable to avoid touching any bare cables, and if there is any electrical problem, it is recommended to seek the assistance of a qualified electrician. If you enjoy the content, please don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn on the notification bell, so you never miss any update. So far, we have covered what the neutral actually is. Now, let's explore the reasons in situations that require a neutral cable. Primarily, the neutral cable connected to the zero-volt reference point eliminates the need of guessing or estimating the voltage levels of live and neutral cables. In a system where secondary voltage of a transformer is 230 volts, the first half of the cycle will span between the zero-volts reference and 230 volts, while the second half falls between zero-volts and minus 230 volts. However, the absence of this reference point can pose challenges. For example, if the neutral to ground link is improperly connected, broken, or loosened, the neutral point loses its reference to zero volts. This can result in a substantial voltage difference between neutral and ground. Let's say if this voltage rise to 110 volts, while the secondary voltage of the transformer remains at 230 volts, the live to ground voltage will also increases to 340 volts. Generally, the equipment and its internal circuits are carefully designed with specific insulation voltages. Elevated voltage levels to ground can stress the insulation, potentially leading to flashovers, increasing the risk of fire and electric shock. Therefore, in the majority of systems, the neutral-to-ground link at transformer is deemed necessary. It's worth noting that there are special cases like a specifically designed, IT grounding system at certain places where the neutral is not connected to ground, but we will explore that topic in a future discussion. Furthermore, the presence of a neutral allows the incorporation of both three-phase and single-phase loads within the same system. In the case of a balanced three-phase system, for example, if a three-phase load is connected, each phase will have equal voltage and current magnitudes spaced 120 degrees apart. This equilibrium ensures a uniform power distribution across the three phases. The current flowing through each phase wire utilizes the other two phases as a return path, eliminating the need for a neutral cable. For better understanding, let's observe the graph with balanced three-phase currents. At any given moment, the vector sum of IR, IY, and IB results in a net zero current flow. This implies that there will be no current flowing through the neutral cable and neutral cable can be eliminated. Similar to our explanation earlier, 
Although the neutral cable is not necessary in the case of a balance load, the neutral point at the transformer is still connected to the ground reference point to maintain an equal potential. This connection prevents the occurrence of unpredictable and hazardous lift-to-ground voltages. In practical scenario, the system often comprises not only three-phase loads, but also various single-phase loads that require neutral as a return path. For instance, in commercial buildings, lighting and small appliances are commonly single-phase loads connected to one phase in the neutral, while larger machinery, such as HVAC, or elevator operates on three-phase power. In this scenario, the distribution of the load is uneven and the phases may not achieve perfect balance. For example, let's consider a scenario where phase R carries a peak current of 25 amps, phase Y is at 20 amps, and phase B is at 15 amps. When we calculate the sum of these currents, the vector sum of IR, IY, and IB result is approximately 8.66 amps, indicating an imbalance and not zero. In such imbalanced systems, the neutral assumes the crucial role of carrying the net current back to the source. Up to this point, we've covered the concept of neutral and its importance. Now let's discuss some electrical issues related to the neutral. As mentioned earlier, the neutral cable is connected to the neutral point at the transformer, utilizing it as the zero volts reference point. Additionally, the neutral cable serves the crucial role of carrying the net current back to the source. For easier understanding, we will redraw the circuit as illustrated below. For example, in normal condition, the equipment will be receiving phase voltage, VRN, VYN, in this case, they are 230 volts. However, if the connection between neutral cable and neutral point of transformer is broken or loosened, it leads to a condition known as a floating neutral. As the name indicates, floating neutral means the potential of the neutral cable will fluctuate depending on the loads connected to all three phases. For easier understanding, let's look at the redrawn circuit. In this scenario, the equipment for single-phase system will be sharing the line-to-line -line voltage at 400 volts and the broken neutral will be acting as linking medium in between. Under imbalanced load conditions, the phase voltage VRN, VYN, and VBN can be affected. For example, if the equipment connected to phase R has lower impedance than equipment connected to phase Y, then VRN will experience lower voltage while phase VYN will rise to a higher voltage. This poses a significant issue for connected single-phase equipment. Under-voltage conditions can cause devices to malfunction or fail to operate, while higher voltage levels can stress and damage the equipment, increasing the risk of fire. Moreover, the voltage between the neutral cable and the neutral point or ground of the transformer may have a substantial value. This can threaten human safety as the voltage between neutral cable and ground may exceed the safe limit and become dangerously high. Therefore, ensuring a secure connection of the neutral cable to the neutral point of the transformer is crucial. Last but not least, in this condition, the line-to-line -line voltage remains and three-phase loads may not be affected. Another consideration is that the color coding of neutral cables is not standardized globally. Different countries may use different color codes. For instance, black color may be used as live cable in one country, but as neutral cable in the other. It may lead to confusion when purchasing electrical devices, especially from various countries. Thus, it is crucial to double-check the instructions or datasheet and ensure the correct cable type before installation. Additionally, during the installation process, using imprecise cable colors, such as a mixed color for live and neutral cables, can lead to confusion during future maintenance. Relying on color alone to identify the neutral is risky as it might be mistaken for a live cable. Therefore, it is advisable to use a test pen to verify the presence of dangerous electrical voltage before handling any cable connections. That's it for today's video. I hope you have a clearer understanding of neutral. If you find this video helpful, please remember to like, subscribe, turn on the notification bells, and share it with others. Thank you.